So this is how it starts. Twelve Astani, male and female bandits, are standing and sitting around the fire telling stories and guzzling wine. Yep, twelve of them. I need twelve Astani. And see this little guy here? Yeah, uh, he just waiting to be a stand-in again because I don't have twelve Astani bandits. And it gets worse than that. Look at this. Three sober Vastani, female and human bandits, uh, are hanging out and they're sober in the wagons. So it's went from 12 to 15, right? 12, 13, 14, 15. And so this little guy and his cronies now are sitting there going, ha 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 ha, I get some playtime now, baby. I'm going to be Vastani. Well, let me tell you what. I just recently found out about this thing called Hero Forge. And uh, you can make heroes out of it, but I'm willing to bet you can make bandits too. I also have a 3D printer. That might make things even more interesting, more accessible. I can probably do this all from the comfort of my uh, studio here. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And this guy and his little uh, buddies, well, they're going back on the shelf. See how they feel about it now. Let's dive into this. So here we are in Google, and we're going to go ahead and go over to Hero Forge. Hero Forge, there we go. It's loading it up, and I'm in. So here's what it looks like. You have the model you're working on in the middle here. And then off to your right hand side, you have a bunch of controls. So starting at the top, you have your races. So you select a race that you want to work on. What race is your character going to be? You can do a human, which is what we're going to be working with. Um, elf, half-elf, dwarf, elemental, gnome, half-orc, halfling, half-demon, half-dragon. This goes on and on. Canine, feline, rat folk, minotaur, turtle person, lizard person, raven folk, fawn, on and on, forest guardian, elephant folk, elephant folk, elephant folk. All right, uh, fairy tale goblin, feral goblin, zombie, some skeletons. Skeletons probably be useful. Make a lot of different skeletons. Uh, goblinoid, hobgoblin, robot, robot. Robot would be cool. Science fiction stuff, baby. Uh, rabbit folk. Half giant. Aquatic humanoid. Merfolk. Centaur. Orc. And Cobol. Let's go all the way back up. And we're going to go back down to our human. Make sure we pick our male human. And then let's go to our face. Now we're going to be making Vastani, which are in the Curse of Strahd. Vastani are a representation of the uh, the Romani people, the gypsies. So I'm going to go with more uh, more of a defined face, something like that, maybe. That's uh, probably all right. No, 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 no. I think I'm going to go with that. So that's the face I'm going to go with. Um, I know right off that I want this guy to have a beard, so I'm going to give him, there we go, well-trimmed goatee. I think that'll look good. Not bad. And then let's go over to his expression. Looking at the expressions here, uh, I think of a gypsy as somebody who's a little cocky, so let's go with a cocky expression. It's good, and then you can mess around with that a little bit more, make it a little wider. A little bit of a snarl. Alright, and then let's see, ears, we're going to keep them pretty normal. Hair. Give this guy a little bit of long hair. Let's give him this hair here. Yeah, he's a long haired gypsy dude. So, let's see, no horns, eyes are fine, teeth are fine, you got some additional stuff over here, so, like a snake hood, all kinds of weird, weird things, snake hood, that's weird, things coming out of his head, nah, I don't want to mess with that, so, 
that guy looks pretty good for a gypsy. Now we're gonna go down to the body. Uh, humanoid torso. We'll leave it at that. You can do these others like robotic, gaunt, skeleton, damaged torso. I guess for zombies and stuff. We're going to skip that and go over to our outfits. So you've got full outfit sets here if you want to pick from them. We'll see if we have any gypsy looking clothing on here. Maybe that. I don't know. Nah, not liking it. This may be scavenger's clothes. No. Not really seeing a lot. If they had like a swashbuckler type, that might be better. But I'm not seeing anything that's standing out. Let's go and just manage the clothes independently. So with the headwear, I would expect maybe something like a bandana. That's not too bad. They have a do-rag or something. Ooh, like a pirate head wrap. It says ninja head wrap, but that looks pretty good for a gypsy type guy. And let's stop for a minute and go back and see what this looks like. Up again. All right. So I'm happy with the headwear. The headwear looks good to me. Let's go over to his chest. Outlaw Duster. Ooh. Swashbuckler. Yeah, that's a little better. And let's see. Yeah, we'll go with the swashbuckler. And then for the pants, <clears throat> let's see what we got for the pants. Breeches, well, druid pants, nah, peasant, no, breeches. Yeah, that looks good. Somewhat like one, well, maybe something a little simpler. There we go. Little belt, simple pants. That works. Let's go to his feet. We want some kind of boot. Not sneakers. Boots. There we go. Thief's leather boots. That's what that looks like. Nah. Yeah. Maybe that. Or that. That looks better. So it looks pretty good. Alright, so... Legs. Uh, let's see what we have here for his weapons gonna give this dude a crossbow because you know ranged weapon that looks pretty good to me let's go down I can put him on a horse a pony Ooh, a wolf look at that he could be riding a wolf motorcycle Let's go back to the horse. Now, these are going to be all on foot, so I'm going to skip that. But that's good to know you can do that. Uh, let's go to the bases. So you can pick the base. So here you pick the base. Have him on wood, a circle, squares, cobblestone. I'm just going to go with plain. Because I'll probably want to put stuff on there myself. But then, you've got items you could put on the base. Like a... You could have a cat. This would be good for, like, people who have familiars. Like, warlocks and stuff. A robot head. Hmm. Pumpkin. Oh, you could have a Halloween theme. Jack-o'-lantern. Maybe a sword stuck in the ground. Eh. I don't think I'm going to mess with any of these, but it's pretty cool to know you have them. A little chest at your feet. I'm going to make these playable, so I want them to be able to move around. But if you were making a character that was specific to, um, like, your favorite character or something like that, this would be pretty cool to add in there. Ooh, put in a d20. Look at that. All right. 
Uh, enough of that. Let's get to the poses. Ooh, look at that. You can change the poses. Make him... Yeah, baby. Oh, look at that. So that would be, be a good pose for a cleric, I think. Eh, go down. Superman pose. Look at that. And by holding down the uh, left mouse button, you can spin it all the way around and see what it looked like 360. Sort of casually walking up before he shoots you. I think I like the first pose better. Like he's on guard, he's ready to shoot. Let's go with that one. Got some extras here. Guess you can order dice to go with your character. Look at that. Red, and pick different kinds of colors. I don't want any of that. Now material. You can pick plastic. Look at that. Do they have collars? Can you have this painted? So if you order it in plastic, it had to take five to six weeks. Premium plastic. Um, glossy black and have some faint layer lines. Similar density or durability rather to regular plastic, but are manufactured with 50 micron layer resolution, double that of our base plastic material. Ooh, you can get it in steel. Look at that. Rough texture similar to cast iron. Bronze. Wow. And then you can download the STL files, which is what we're going to do. But first, I'm going to go back and I'm going to make a handful of other poses and styles and mess around with this a little bit more. And then I'm going to print out um, each one and let you see it. But materials and pricing. Here we go. If you want plastic, your mini is going to cost you $20. That's a little, it's a little expensive, but I mean, it's a custom miniature. So uh, premium plastic is $10 more dollars. Yeah, steel, I mean. Steel is $34, $35, basically. Bronze is $100. That's a... I guess if it's your favorite character and you want to bronze it, sure. Uh, and then di the digital file, which is what we're going to... We're going to mess around with. And that starts at 10 bucks. So... It says 10 bucks, but we'll see. So let's close that down. We'll go back here and we'll go to checkout and make a bunch, bunch of others. So at the end of the day, I made a bunch of different heroes. Um, a Madam Eva right here. So let's look at that. Here's a Madam Eva character that's at that uh, Searpool encampment. So Madam Eva, uh, that's one model I'm going to print out. Let's go back and look at the others. I'm going to have this character, a female Vastani print that out. I think that'll look good. Be interesting to see how detailed these are when they come out. Um, we're going to do our crossbow guy. This guy. Another one with two swords. So I think those are the ones we're going to print out. We'll check it out and get back to you and let you know how they look. So a couple of points I want to make here is um, I printed these out using the medium weight uh, supports. Don't do that. I mean, it causes a lot of scarring. It's a big pain in the ass to clean them up. I did a second run with the light supports, and I have to say it was way better, less scarring, and easier to clean up, and they looked pretty good after um, that second run. I think one of the things uh, you want to look at here is the side-by-side -side comparisons. Here's what on the right is the 
picture from Hero Forge, and on the left is the actual model as it was printed out. Um, what you can't see here is the level of detail. It is actually pretty good, and I'm anxious to sit down and start painting them and see how they turn out. But uh, at the end of this, I want to show you this shot here, which is how much I paid for these. Just four pennies under $32 and I can print out as many of them as I want so if I need 17 Vastani I've got females and males to print out and if I want other forms I can go back to Hero Forge come up with other poses other weapons and print them out and uh, yeah that's pretty much it it's a little pricey until you consider that you get the model and then you print it out as many as you want and then the price goes down considerably so in this particular case it turned out to be, I think, a good use of time and money, and I really enjoyed the process. The Hero Forge stuff is really cool. I don't know that I would use it to print out, have them print it out. You know, that's pretty expensive, unless I was doing, like I said, a character I really loved. And that concludes another episode of Tabletop That. Feel free to hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video. If you didn't, feel free to hit that thumbs down button. Leave comments below and hit that subscribe button if you're so inclined. And until next time, have fun and keep crafting.